If you've ever driven a gasoline-powered car, odds are you've had a tiny bit of rhodium riding along with you without even realizing it. Tucked away inside every catalytic converter is a small amount of this ultra-rare, ultra-valuable metal. It doesn't look like much just a fine powder or a thin coating on a ceramic honeycomb, but rhodium is one of the most expensive materials on Earth, fetching more per ounce than gold, platinum, or even diamonds at times. But here's the catch. Rhodium doesn't come out of the ground easily. It's almost always found mixed in with other metals. So when a car reaches the end of its life, that old catalytic converter suddenly becomes a modern-day treasure chest if you know how to unlock it. In this deep dive, we'll follow the fascinating journey of rhodium from spent catalytic converters to precious reclaimed metal, step by step. Most people think of catalytic converters as simple parts in a car's exhaust system. Their job? To reduce harmful emissions. But what makes them truly special is what's inside. A ceramic core coated with platinum, palladium, and rhodium, three members of the Platinum Group Metals, or PGMS. Rhodium plays a key role by converting toxic nitrogen oxides, NOx, into harmless nitrogen and oxygen. It only takes a few grams to do the job, but those few grams are worth a fortune, often over $10,000 per ounce. That value is why catalytic converters are one of the most recycled automotive parts on the planet, and why their theft has become a billion-dollar global crime problem. But once a converter has been legally removed and collected, it enters a high-tech, high-stakes world of metal recovery. So how do recyclers get the rhodium out? It all starts with collection. Catalytic converters come from scrapyards, junked vehicles, and auto repair shops. Some are still attached to exhaust pipes. Others have been sawn off for easier handling. Recyclers sort them by type OEM versus aftermarket, and sometimes even by make and model. Since different vehicles contain different amounts and ratios of PGMs, the most valuable converters come from older trucks, SUVs, and high-performance vehicles. These units often contain more rhodium than newer, more efficient designs. Some converters contain just a few hundred milligrams, while others might have several grams in total, though it's never pure rhodium alone. Once collected, the converters are shipped to a processing facility. That's where the real work begins. The first step is called decanning. Workers use hydraulic shears or saws to cut open the stainless steel shell and expose the honeycomb-shaped core inside. This core is usually made of ceramic, or in some cases, metallic foil. It's coated with a wash of alumina and other oxides that hold the precious metals in place. Once removed, the ceramic core is crushed into a fine powder using industrial crushers or hammer mills. This powder is what holds the rhodium, and it's what gets processed further. Before going any further, the crushed material is typically run through a sampling process. A small portion of the powder is tested in a lab to determine its exact content of rhodium, platinum, and palladium. This analysis helps determine how much the material is worth and which recovery method should be used. There are two main ways to extract rhodium from the powdered material, pyrometallurgical, heat-based, and hydrometallurgical, chemical-based. Many modern refineries use a combination of both to maximize recovery. First comes smelting. In large induction or electric arc furnaces, the powder is heated to extremely high temperatures, well above 1,500 degrees Celsius. This melts the base metals, burns off unwanted compounds, and concentrates the PGMs into a dense metallic mat at the bottom of the furnace. Fluxes are added to help separate slag from metal. The slag mostly leftover ceramics, oxides, and impurities rises to the top and is skimmed away. The mat at the bottom contains a mixture of platinum, palladium, rhodium, and other trace elements, but it's still not pure. To isolate the rhodium, chemical processes take over. The mat is cooled, crushed again, and dissolved in a series of chemical baths usually using aqua regia, a mix of nitric and hydrochloric acid, or other proprietary leaching solutions designed to selectively dissolve specific metals. Each PGM dissolves differently depending on the acidity, temperature, and presence of oxidizers. Platinum and palladium dissolve relatively quickly. 
Rhodium, however, is notoriously stubborn. It's one of the most chemically inert elements on Earth, which makes it both valuable and hard to recover. To coax it into solution, refiners often use a two-stage leaching process. The first stage dissolves platinum and palladium. The solid residue still rich in rhodium is filtered out, then subjected to harsher conditions. Stronger acids, elevated temperatures, and sometimes even pressure reactors. Eventually, the rhodium goes into solution, and from there, it's ready to be separated. Once in solution, rhodium can be recovered through precipitation, by adjusting the pH or adding specific reagents such as ammonium salts or sulfur compounds, the rhodium is forced out of the liquid and forms a solid precipitate. This precipitate is filtered, washed, and dried to produce rhodium powder, usually in the form of rhodium 3-hydroxide or another stable salt. But the work isn't over yet. To be sold or reused in industry, the rhodium has to be reduced to its metallic form. This is typically done in a hydrogen furnace, where the powdered salt is heated under a hydrogen gas stream. The hydrogen strips away oxygen and other atoms, leaving behind pure rhodium metal. The end result? A silvery gray powder or sponge-like metal with incredible market value. The recovered rhodium can now be melted and cast into various forms. Ingots, granules, pellets, or even sputtering targets for electronics manufacturing. Some of it goes straight back into making new catalytic converters. Other batches are used in specialized industries. Rhodium is essential for making high-temperature thermocouples, optical mirrors, and as a coating in jewelry. A small amount even makes it into the world of art and luxury. Rhodium is prized for its mirror-like shine and corrosion resistance, often used to plate white gold or silver to prevent tarnishing. But no matter where it ends up, the path it took through decanning, crushing, smelting, leaching, and refining was anything but simple. The rhodium recovery industry is also evolving. With growing concerns about emissions, cost, and environmental damage, some companies are turning to greener alternatives. New hydrometallurgical systems are being developed that use organic solvents, bio-leaching bacteria, or electrochemical cells to extract PGMs without high heat or harsh chemicals. These methods are still being refined, but offer hope for safer, more sustainable recovery. At the same time, advanced sensors and XRF analyzers now let processors scan whole batches of converters before even cutting them open, streamlining the valuation process and reducing waste. Even AI and machine learning are entering the mix. Some facilities use software to predict recovery yields based on real-time chemical data and historical converter models. So, why go through all this trouble for a few grams of metal? Because rhodium isn't just rare, it's irreplaceable. There's no good alternative for its role in reducing NOx emissions. That's why automakers still rely on it, even as they shift toward electrification. And with new emission standards tightening across the globe, demand is likely to remain strong. Yet global rhodium supply is incredibly limited. Most of it comes as a byproduct from platinum mining in South Africa and Russia, places where labor issues, political instability, or logistical problems can disrupt supply chains overnight. That makes recycling not just economically smart, but strategically essential. In fact, recycled PGMs now supply up to 30% of the global market, rhodium included. So the next time you see an old car getting scrapped, remember, there could be a few grams of rhodium hiding in the tailpipe, waiting to begin a second life in a lab, factory, or jewelry store. The journey from junk exhaust to precious metal isn't quick or easy, but it's a prime example of how modern recycling doesn't just save resources, it captures value that would otherwise vanish in a cloud of dust and rust. If you found this process as fascinating as we did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more deep dives into the hidden worlds of materials and manufacturing. Got a question or a suggestion for what we should cover next? Drop it in the comments below, we read everyone. Until next time, stay curious, stay resourceful, and keep digging deeper.